Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless romans 13 11, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed the closer we draw to the second coming of christ the more urgent it is that we awake out of spiritual sleep we have entered the end times and with it the grand climax of human civilization culminating in the return of Jesus Christ. If ever there was a time to pay attention and get prepared, it is now. Furthermore, none of us knows when he or she will die. Being spiritually prepared for the end of life should be our top priority. Jesus emphasized the importance of watching for his return as we read in Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Watching means properly using our mind. God gave us the ability to study, learn, observe, analyze, judge, and think. It is our God-ordained responsibility to watch and pray for Jesus' return. Ignorance comes from ignoring, and God does not want us to be ignorant to the season of the Lord's return, as we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-11. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. We need to know the Bible prophecies of the end time, especially the prophecies surrounding the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Jesus was emphatic that his followers should hope for his return, expect his return, and pray for his return. The World Health Organization is moving forward to revise international regulations in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Some critics say the proposed changes would give the WHO authority and control over health care, trade, and other aspects of our lives. Reggie Littlejohn, president of Women's Rights Without Frontiers, explains what the proposed revisions would mean for the United States and the world. I believe that it will mean the establishment of a, a worldwide totalitarian biotech state. So th these these instruments, and, and by the way, you, you correctly uh, characterized the er zero draft as an agreement. Uh, that's what they are calling it. They don't want to call it a treaty because they are deliberately trying to subvert the United States and the other countries' treaty processes. So if it's an agreement, all it takes is a signature. It does not take going through our Senate. So people say, oh, don't worry about it. It will never pass our Senate. Well, they are deliberately subverting our Senate uh, process. Signatories must recognize, quote, the central role of the WHO as a directing and coordinating authority on international health work. What do you believe that means? Well, it, it means that the WHO it, it is able to call the shots if there's any health uh, emergency or potential health emergency anywhere in the world. The language that says that they have to have the permission of the country has it, is stricken so that they can do it without the permission of the country. And it's not only about human health, they have something called One Health, which means that they can do it on behalf of human health, animal health, plant health, the environment. They can use any reason that they want to be able to come in and basically run, run the show in terms of uh, addressing that health issue. I've read the Zero Draft proposal. 
It gives the WHO authority over the global supply chain, trade, commerce, uh, through establishment of the WHO Global Pandemic Supply Chain and Logistics Network. WHO Director, uh, Director General uh, Tedros would lead that effort early on in the pandemic. You remember Tedros praised President Xi Jinping for China's efforts to control the outbreak. So your thoughts on him and his potential control of the supply chain. Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus is very closely aligned with the Chinese Communist Party. And the Chinese Communist Party has absolutely outsized uh, influence at the World Health Organization, uh, which is why they were able to get away with all the lies that they did, which were just amplified by uh, Dr. Tedros. So this is, uh, is not a good alliance at all. How is the Biden administration planning to use the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, to pre-approve whatever is approved by the WHO. This is something that just came to my attention on Friday from another from an international law expert that this uh, National Defense Authorization Act, which was rammed through at the very end of the last Congress, contains within it something called the International Pandemic Preparedness Act. And I think most people in Congress don't even know about this. That act contains a loophole in it, which he argues, and I agree, would makes it that whatever the World Health Organization passes is automatically made law in the United States, again, subverting our, our Senate. So this needs to be opposed. And in fact, I think that the entire World Health Organization attempt to take over the world, really, um, through vaccine passports, that's another thing that they want to do. The World Health Organization, if these things are passed, will have the ability to mandate in the United States, how we handle a pandemic, including forced quarantines, forced mass mandates, forced vaccine mandates. Why, why should we allow Dr. Tedros, who failed so miserably in handling the Wuhan virus, order us around about how we handle our own health? So I think that we should actually withdraw from the WHO, and we are calling for uh, there's there's a a, a uh, bill that is sponsored by Representative Biggs. Um, and there is also a debate right now about raising the, de the debt ceiling. I think that anyone who believes in freedom in the U.S. Congress should condition raising the debt ceiling on U.S. withdrawal from the World Health Organization. I believe that it will mean the establishment of a, a, a worldwide totalitarian biotech state. When the deception comes, if you're not a born-again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist. They're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. As anyone can plainly see, we are living in the last moments before the return of Jesus Christ. America is in a spiritual battle between good and evil, as we read in Ephesians 6.12, where we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. House Republicans are moving ahead with their plans on education by introducing a bill called the Parents' Bill of Rights. Wendy Griffith has that story. One thing we know in this country is education is the great equalizer. And we want the parents to be empowered. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says the Parents' Bill of Rights Act sits on five main pillars. The right to know what's being taught in schools and their reading material. The right to be heard. The right to see school budgets. The right to protect their children's privacy. 
and the right to be updated on any violent activity at school. We think these are pretty basic things that everybody and every parent should have a right to. Several parents were on hand to remind lawmakers why this legislation is so critical. One mom from Rhode Island was sued by a teacher's union for wanting to know what her kindergartner would be learning. I'm still in litigation for almost two years with the teacher's union. I still don't have my answers. But what I do know is that my school district and my teacher's union didn't want to just hide the curriculum from me. They wanted to ruin my life just for asking for it. And I don't want that to happen to any other parent in America. They sued you for asking what's being taught to your child. I mean, we wouldn't think we'd have to do this bill, but you are the exact reason why we have the Parents' Bill of Rights. On CBN's Faith Nation, Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council raised the question of how the Democrats will respond. It's going to be very interesting to see what the other side of the aisle does with this measure that simply empowers parents, creates transparency in education, making sure that the parents who pay for the schools have an understanding of what their children are being taught and have a voice in the process. As parents, it is our primary duty to protect our children and preserve their innocence. Unfortunately, there is a toxic movement infiltrating our schools that is more interested in pushing a political agenda rather than teaching our students, our children, what the subjects we were taught in school. Congresswoman Julia Letlow, who sponsored the bill, says the pandemic brought to light what's actually being taught in schools, including a curriculum heavy on LGBTQ rights, critical race theory, and other so-called woke indoctrination. And so then we did the right thing, right? We went to our school boards and we voiced our displeasure, but we were turned away. And some of us were even labeled domestic terrorists. That was absolutely not right. And so that was the impetus for this bill. That was it. Thanks to all of you in this room for the parents for stepping up and saying, no, enough is enough. We also saw things like gender ideology, which is teaching that you can believe that if you believe that you are another sex, that that's what you should be affirmed in. And we know as parents that that is not something that is that's not scientific. It is not um, it's not biological. And we need to deal with these problems in the proper way. Critics say the bill would lead to education bans and take books off of classroom shelves. But House Republicans say parents have a right to a seat at the table when it comes to their children's education, and the Parents' Bill of Rights will ensure that. The bill is expected to pass the House but face strong opposition in the Democratic-controlled Senate. Ephesians 5, 11, and 12, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak for those things which are done by them in secret. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Do you ever stop during the course of your day and wonder, how did things get so off track in America? Now, I'm just not talking about the lousy economy or high prices either. A lot of our bedrock values seem to be in short supply. Respect for elders, respect for our history, respect for our constitution. How about just basic decency? You just put a magazine in it and you still try to load it. Everyone knows we have a violence problem in America, but we're seeing a disturbing new pattern. Violent teens popping up all across the country, and they're consistently getting second, third, even fourth chances, even after committing heinous felonies. In Orlando, Florida, on Tuesday, a 17-year-old student beat his teacher 
violently, punching her over and over and over again until she was unconscious. All because she took away his Nintendo video game during class. He was arrested for felony aggravated battery, but not before telling the teacher he'd kill her on his way out. I don't want to go to jail. We're going to stop. Stop. Stupid. I'm going to kill you. We told you earlier in the week about 18 year old Miles Pfeiffer, who shot a police officer execution style last weekend in Philly, and then he committed a carjacking. Well, sources say Pfeffer had been previously charged with making terroristic threats against a high school and was repeatedly suspended from school and then was expelled in ninth grade. He wanted everybody to think he was gangster, even though he lived with his mommy in a million dollar house in the suburbs. He even called his mommy to come pick him up after the crime spree. Neighbors say there were cops around his house all the time. Over in Orange County, Florida on Wednesday, a 19 year old named Keith Moses went on a shooting spree shooting five. He killed a 38 year old before fleeing the scene, then returned five hours later and killed a nine year old and a local news reporter before he was arrested. Get on your face. 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 Moses was already a career criminal. This was just at 19. He'd racked up gun charges, aggravated battery, an assault with a deadly weapon, burglary, grand theft. Now, I'm all for second chances, but why are we giving people fourth and fifth chances after we know they're evil? Now, one thing is obvious. When we can't expect our next generations to respect the rule of law, we, can't, we certainly can't if our own FBI is perceived to be flouting the basic idea of equal justice under the law. Well, operating within an obvious political bias, as it did recently against my next guest, Mark Houck, a pro-life activist in Pennsylvania, he's going to tell his story. It was all exposed today, though, during the grilling of A.G. Merrick Garland. This is a case where a Catholic pro-life demonstrator, father, was accused of disorderly conduct in front of an abortion center. The local prosecutor, the Philadelphia district attorney, who is a Democrat, a liberal, very progressive, declined to prosecute. And then after all of that, your Justice Department sent between 20 and 30 armed agents in the early morning hours to the Houck's private residence to arrest this guy after he had offered to turn himself in voluntarily. Here's the photo. Once again, you can see the long guns. You can see the ballistic shields. All I know is what uh, the FBI has said, which is that they made the decisions on the ground as to what was safest and easiest. Are you telling me that in your opinion as attorney general, it was objectively necessary to use 20 or 30 SWAT style agents with long guns and ballistic shields for these people? What I'm saying is that decisions about how to go about this were made on the ground by FBI agents. So you're saying that is a disgraceful performance by your Justice Department and a disgraceful use of resources. Holly was masterful. And everyone, including liberals, know that the FBI gives kid gloves treatment to liberal activists who vandalize property, terrorize people, smash and loot. Now, there's little to no chance that they're going to be treated like Mr. Houck. Garland had pathetic excuses. But Senator Lee, he had the facts. In 2022 and for the first couple of months of 2023, DOJ has announced charges against 34 individuals for blocking access to or vandalizing abortion clinics. And there have been over 81 reported attacks on pregnancy centers, 130 attacks on Catholic churches since the leak of the Dobbs decision, and only two individuals have been charged. So how do you explain this disparity uh, uh, by reference to anything other than politicization of what's happening there. I will say you are quite right. There are many more prosecutions with respect uh, to the um, um, blocking of the, uh, um, of the abortion centers, but that is generally because they are, uh, those actions are taken in, uh, with photography at the time, um, uh, during the daylight, and uh, seeing the person who did it is uh, quite easy. Um, the, those who are attacking the pregnancy resources centers, uh, which is a, a horrid thing to do, are doing this at night um, in the dark. Ah, it's the pro-sunshine bias. I got it. Oh, my goodness. Garland has zero credibility. And when it was Cruz's time to question him, 
Oh boy. In the wake of the leak of the Dobbs decision, when rioters descended at the homes of six Supreme Court justices, night after night after night, you did nothing. When extremist groups like Ruth Senas and Jane's Revenge openly organized campaigns of harassment at the homes of justices, you sat on your hands. When these same groups posted online information about where the justices worship or their home addresses or where their kids went to school, you again sat on your hands and did nothing. Has the Department of Justice brought even a single case under this statute? The job of the United States Marshals is to defend the lives so of the So the answer is no. It's to defend the lives of the justices, and that's our number one priority. They have Why full... are you unwilling to say no? The answer is no. You know it's no. I know it's no. Everyone in this, in this hearing room knows it's no. Well, of course it is. Well, Garland is just another Biden administration official who refuses any accountability. He's not going to apologize for what's happening because this is their plan to weaponize the DOJ that's what they need to do to defeat Republicans, or so they think. Without trust in government, things will continue to spiral in the United States. The way you vote, the church you attend, should never affect the way the government, especially the FBI, with all the powers it has, to treat you under the law any differently. The use of federal power to punish political adversaries is what we expect in Beijing, maybe Moscow, but not in Washington. Senator, did you learn anything from the attorney general today? That this administration will watch people being executed on our streets gang style. They will watch fentanyl destroy communities all across this country and do nothing. But if you're a pro-life demonstrator, I hope you see where this is all going. If you go to church, they will send informants into your church to spy on you. That's an actual thing that the FBI has recommended doing. That's the priorities of this Justice Department. Oh, and of course, if you're a parent and you show up to a school board meeting, yeah, they'll label you a domestic terrorist. That's what we know is going on. What's the vibe you get from this guy? Is he just a yes man? Is he some just squirrely little operator? What's your read on Merrick Garland? The White House wanted it. Why is he going after pro-life demonstrators because the White House wants it. Why is he letting Justice Kavanaugh, Justice Barrett twist in the wind with all these protesters outside of their house because the White House wants it? I think he's just a tool of the White House. And I'll tell you, Jesse, they have weaponized this Justice Department like nothing we have ever seen in American history. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted in the United States like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended will betray one another and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things, fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days 
right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed and empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate Christianity. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in Scripture as the Antichrist as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10-18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that
that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.